Eliza, so do you think religion and conflict, it's the same? Well, certainly identity and conflict is the same in today's world. The book that I just finished is called The Tenth Parallel, and it's about the space where Christianity and Islam largely meet in Africa and Southeast Asia. It took me seven years to travel along this faith-based fault line in Nigeria, Sudan, Somalia, Ethiopia, Indonesia, Malaysia, and the Philippines. And I thought, traveling along the borders of these two great faiths, what would I find there? I thought perhaps that it would bear out the truth that people are fighting more than ever. In truth, that's not the case at all. I watched what happens in droughts, in floods, in political elections, and yes, Christians and Muslims are coming to blows in many, many cases. But the wider truth is that for centuries there's coexistence, and that continues to this day. And the biggest and most overlooked religious clashes of our time are those inside of religions. They're those problems between Muslims and Muslims, Christians and Christians, not between them. So hopefully that's something that the world starts to pay a bit more attention to. Here I need to feel my way through. We have, you know, we, we have had to contend with these profound geopolitical exogenous shocks. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, uh, Karachi has dramatically changed um, every decade. Strikes are uh, fairly commonplace in South Asia. Um, so this is, it's not, uh, not a particularly a big deal. It's, uh, the MQM has called for a strike uh, and there's been there's been tension. I'm surprised by how close things are. You know, I mean, I feel like Sunday is usually just another day of work in, in most of the country. Yeah, it's pretty much, I mean, today there is a shutter down, but mm -hmm. so there would have been a little bit more business. But not much. I think I've missed it. I think we'll go to another one then. And that's actually nicer because it's um, on the sea. Do I think there will be some kind of riot uh, somewhere in this country? Absolutely. I, I would think it would be highly unusual. First of all, these guys riot for TV a lot of the time. So do I think they won't get out? You know, this, mm -hmm. is, a, this is a great moment for That's them. It's a good opportunity. Yeah. yeah, it's just what they do. Left with very little alternative, they get out for the TVs with signs and yelling, right? But if nothing happens at all, I would think that's odd because there's the, right now, in my assessment of it, there's kind of the stunned acquiescence. But even mm -hmm. just talking to people, what's starting to happen with their, like, savvy Twitter friends is that people are starting to get mad, right? They're starting to be, like, on Pakistani soil, what, what, you know, as opposed to the shock. So... So how are young people responding? Are you guys following things on Facebook or Twitter or any of that? Mm -hmm. uh, on Twitter. A little bit. A little bit. Yeah. So on Twitter? Yeah. So, and w oh, just with your friends? Yeah, just with your So I, I think for me it's been on Twitter, it's been on fire the whole morning. Has it been? Yeah. And, and what's the most in interesting thing you've read? I mean, um, there's been a lot of humor besides a lot of main points. Obviously, there's been a lot of, you know, suspicions about um, his identity. <laughs> what, really? He's actually Yep, 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 yep. Yeah, Basically, your peers in the U.S. who are the kind of people who read this slightly, you know, slightly older, but that about that. 
young professionals. What do you think it's important that they understand or start to think about after this? But what is going to happen next if the, uh, Osama is dead today? Even if he's dead, let's just assume that he's dead, what are they going to do next? Are they going to, you know, say that, oh, we did say that Osama is here and you guys were denying it, so now um, I, I guess that we're allowed to raid any place because yeah. uh, there might be, <laughs> there may be a lot of other Taliban hidden in different places, so that's going to be a little horrible for Pakistan. And we also went yesterday, we went yesterday, some of us, to uh, Peace Nish, and were really impressed, uh, both by the level of, of discourse that was going on there, but it was really interesting because there we were in a, you know, the streets were pretty sleepy and quiet, and it was like mad furious in there because young people were blogging and tweeting about all the recent events and we were able to really get a sense, a little bit of a sense of, of how people feel and what they're thinking about. And just to expound on that one stitch, one of the really unusual things about this program is that, you know, I mean, I've been here many times as a journalist, right? And as, to be honest, as a journalist, you talk, as we do, I'm gonna tell you guys, we all talk to who's accessible to us. Frequently, that is not, that, that is people who are on the street. That's not people. We have to know how to go to Peace Nish. We have to be invited to the dinner in the novelist's home. Those things are harder to do. And one of the extremely cool things I've found in just being here for a couple of days, and again, largely inside, is that we've been able to enter these worlds that are almost closed to outsiders. Not because they're, anybody's in or anything, but because in the same way our worlds are closed to outsiders. I mean, who do we invite to our dinner parties? People we know. And, and I certainly have felt enriched by this experience and that I've been able to have a different kind of conversation with people and learn on a different level. The majority of the people in Pakistan, they, they want an immediate end to this war. In, in the, unfortunately, a majority uh, in Pakistan does not even think that this is their war. I mean, this may be a political thought which has been inculcated in their minds, but that's the general perception. People are not interested in politics of Karachi in the United States at all. Nobody cares that this guy was killed yesterday. People kill, care about Osama bin Laden. So that's just part of the way the world works, right? There's the, there's, we can't really shake our fingers at that. That's human nature. So what we do is our, as responsible reporters is try to report the truth.